those who want a good learning will start their video. Okay. Sweet cravings or any cravings and how to prevent that. So the steps, you cannot tell a client, stop the cravings, do not have the craving, do not eat the sweets. No, I'm having the craving because you said me, because I want to lose weight, I will follow your diet one day, two day. After that, I will eat only sweets and nothing but the sweets. So first you understand the concept of glucose spike to understand this. Okay. Have you noticed when you go to a restaurant, most of the restaurant, they serve you some thing uh, to start and that is a complimentary. Yeah. It may be Pani Puri or Dahi Puri or maybe some kind of a sweet or something. So that is a complimentary. It's I'm talking of a la carte. Then you order something actually, right? Breads, especially the breads material, yeah? Something that will have low glycemic index. No, we will not touch the glycemic index today, okay? Something that will cause high glucose spike, okay? Some bread or something made up of that stimulates your brain, okay? Now, after that, you are ordering something. That food is chargeable. So do you think they are preventing you to order something? No, that is a tactic for you to order more. I tell you the funda. They give you something complimentary, then you order something. After 90 minutes, exactly, a waiter comes to you and asks, after this, your entry, would you like some desserts, sweets? That is the time you have the cravings. Why? What has happened now? Understand. You were hungry, you came here, you had some complimentary food, then you order food, you ate. Third stage. Then fourth is dessert stage. Okay. Why you want dessert? Why you want sweet? You will understand the cravings part if you understand this concept. Four stages, you are very hungry, you come to the restaurant, they offer you some complimentary thing that is going to cause you glucose spike, then you eat anything, they don't care, then dessert. Same thing is happening at your home. I tell you, explain you. Little change. When you arrive at the restaurant, you are hungry. The, the glucose is lower. Okay. So we are, we are not, today's session, we are not concerned what is the num amount, what is the value of the glucose. No. You understand the spike only part. Okay. So normally what happens is we have the kind of some fluctuations. But you can assume it is a baseline. Correct. For the easy purpose, we assume it is a baseline. Now, when you eat something, when you eat something with which causes a glucose spike, it suddenly shoots up and it suddenly goes down after some time 45 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, it suddenly goes down. When you had this peak, when you had this peak, you feel good. You feel, yeah, thank God I had something to eat. Now I'm feeling energized. Suddenly there is a spike of energy, suddenly spike of glucose. And after a few minutes, after 90 minutes, 60 minutes, there is a sudden drop. So your brain thinks, for your brain, this peak was the normal down. Your brain is accumulated, acclimatized to that. Now it wants, if drop happens, this drop is actually a normal drop. Huh? It is not dropping below, It is you are not causing hypoglycemia. You are coming to normal. But from this peak, it is coming down, your brain thinks, oh no. My sugar has gone down. My sugar supply has gone down. My glucose has gone down. I need some food. I want to eat. Yes, bring everything. All the deserts in the world, all the sugar in the world, all the sweets, all the rasgulla, all the gulab jamun, everything I want to eat. And then at the end, chocolate also I want. Is it happening with you? Yes. So the same thing is happening with your home also. Now there are two concepts we will understand. Number one is how to prevent this glucose spike. Number two is how to prevent this craving. You are having craving. You cannot tell that no, don't have cravings. So are there certain things which you can do, certain things which you can eat or drink that prevents your craving? Very silly, straight, okay. At home, what is happening? You don't eat frequently. Because you want to lose weight. You don't want to go get overweight. So you are eating twice or thrice or one time. You're fasting. Oh, yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, you're doing Noratri fasting and you have reached a low glucose level. Now you are very hungry. 
okay because you are eating less nowadays because of you want to lose weight and look fit and there is a low glucose and so you eat something suddenly there is a glucose spike sudden spike because why it does happen if you would have eaten something around 5 pm 6 pm then you would have some stable glucose level you would not have fall you understand two two people one person lunch now by the time dinner comes 8 pm 9 pm the glucose level is so low that you are having you need to eat fast i'm very hungry i'm very hungry and you eat fast you eat rapidly you eat all the food suddenly there is a glucose spike correct after 90 minutes of your meal there is a drop in the glucose spike. after 45 minutes of your meal depending on what you ate there is a drop because of this drop you feel there is a craving for more food how many of you get second cravings in the middle of the night or if you finish your meal 9 p.m you get your cravings 11 p.m 1 p.m yeah you feel yeah i need to eat something some bed night snacks yes yeah write down in the chat it is happening with you nothing wrong in that it's not your problem it's everyone's problem write down the time when it happens to you for me what is the time Actually, there is no time. <laughs> Still, I will write. Whatever. 1 p.m. AM or 11 p.m. or sometimes 4 a.m. Okay. Yes. So, not craving for the sugar, but to eat something craving. Because you had a glucose drop, you ate something, created a glucose spike, and this glucose spike was so sudden, and the fall was so sudden, that you need to eat something now. Though your stomach is full, but you feel there is a craving for food. Correct? Now, for the craving for the food, there are two things. One is the stomach should be full. That you feel that, yes, my stomach is, it sends signal to the brain that there is a food inside. It is full now. You cannot send anything more. You cannot say, stuff your food. Then there is another signal, which happens because of certain hormones and certain things. Okay? Some enzymes. Now, one of the easiest way, I tell you, psychological condition, depression which causes you to eat more. Yeah. So when you are depressed, when you are uh, not happy, when you are disappointed, when you had a fight with your husband, you eat more on those days. Okay. Your husband eats more on those days. So you do fast. You should eat more. Try it. So this is happening because of your emotional disturbance. That is one part. Second part is it is happening because you are not managing your glucose spikes. So I will tell you what is the second person doing. This was first person. Empty stomach, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., heavy meal, sudden drop. Okay, by the time you come to bed. So if you sleep by 10 p.m., you will have no craving. If you do not sleep by 11 p.m., you need something to eat. There is another person, which is a smart person who looks thin. Why thin? Not because he or she is eating less. Because... He or she is not having glucose spikes, not having less cravings. So have lunch, whatever time you want, then evening supper, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., something light I want to eat. Okay. Then, so what will happen is instead of my glucose spike at a uh, glucose uh, drop at uh, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., it will have a stable glucose level, 5 p.m. onwards, it has a stable glucose level. I'm not so much hungry, but it is time to eat. Everyone in the family is eating, so I will eat. 9 p.m. Now the glucose spike is not that much because you are eating in a balanced manner and the, this glucose, whatever, even if it is a spike is happening, this spike is not happening from here. You understand? If you are hungry, the spike is happening from here. If you eat something at 5 p.m., your glucose is at this level. Now the spike is happening from here. So your craving will be less. Simple method. So, what is the rational behind? You divide your meals into frequent meals. This is the rational. So, when you get a client, don't tell your client that uh, divide your meals. No, you have to explain to the client. Then you build a connection with the client. Client will come to you next time. Hey, other ma'am, she was just like carrying a piece of paper and telling me, do this. I cannot understand a single thing. But this ma'am, she is really good. She explained me the scientific logic. Why I should have divided meals and she will follow it and she will tell her friends hey this ma'am she told me this logic also huh? you visit her she will tell you 
she told me for my condition she will tell you for your condition also she will go you understand that's how you build your practice by winning the clients by having a conversation nutritionist dietitian is not a typewriter or a checklist writer tick 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 you eat this 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 ha huh. don't eat this don't eat this take this and go get out no yeah so you understood the concept if you understood the concept till now, you write understood. Those who do not write understood, they are zombies. They are just attending the class, not interactive. They are attending to prove themselves. Yes, I am active, I am attending. But they are not active. Their brain is sleeping. If you are not understood, you can still write not understood. You will understand in next few minutes. We have seen a person who does not eat throughout the day and only eats, skips the supper, eats dinner. Okay, is going to have craving. We have seen another person who eats some supper at 5 p.m., 6 p.m., has a better glucose level and the spike is not high as compared to this. Okay, but the drop is going to be there. So craving is going to be there, but it is not so big craving. Okay, but it is still going to be there. Now the question is, how do I manage this drop? Correct? Either you come here or either you from start from here, there is a drop. So I need to manage this drop. So there are two solutions for this. One, either I identify some foods which I will eat for drops. Glucose spike, drop. At this drop position, there are certain things I want to eat. I had decided. There are certain things I will not eat. Write down everyone. What you have decided now. Healthy, healthy things. So what you will eat. First write down what you will eat at this craving point, at this drop. It's 11 p.m. You cannot go outside. Huh? Okay, start writing. Banana, dry fruits, dry fruits, mixed nuts, some berries, okay, fox nuts. What is this fox nuts? Parul is very fancy. Huh? Cold milk. So I come from a where hot dog means I never thought what is hot dog. I was always like, you know, ah, so fox nut, you can understand what I'm thinking now from where it comes. Lotus seeds. Oh, lotus seeds are fox nuts. Okay, thank you. You get lotus seeds? Okay. Can you send me the link, Paru? Fruits, dry fruits, dry fruit laddu, granite chicki. Very good. Okay, sweets. Sure, sure. Uh, Okay. Hey, who is this Horlicks powder? Okay, she eats Horlicks powder from her child's Horlicks. Huh? Hey. She has not mentioned the Horlicks powder milk. Dry Horlicks powder. Interesting. So this is something you want to eat. Okay, there are certain things you want to avoid. So we'll see, first see what are the things you can eat at this stage for the cravings. So the better part is for this cravings is So why is the craving? Craving is because of the sugar drop and because your stomach is also a little empty. So what you do is during your meals, you are filling your stomach with the vegetables. At this stage, you can still eat vegetables again or you can eat fruits or you can eat all those uh, foods which will not cause again second glycemic, uh, this second glucose spike. Okay. So what are those foods? which will not cause glucose spike, which will have steady glucose level. What are those foods? Write down. So we want to eat that. We want to give that to our child before sleep. Before sleep, do not forget your milk. Before sleep, do not forget. Many people, they eat dahi. Many people, they don't give dahi during night. Yeah. So those who don't believe, it's okay. You can eat popcorn. If you are having these cravings, you can eat dry fruits, okay. Lotus seed, some seeds, something, something, some some special seeds. If you are fancy and if you can afford, if your budget, you can buy. Okay, don't run behind that. Whatever is available, you can eat. If you don't have dry fruits, eat makara. Okay, whatever you can, uh, you like. Okay. Murmura, puff rice, that's a good choice. Okay. 
So at the night time, we want to prevent our another glucose spike while we are sleeping because that is going to disturb your sleep. So we try to avoid sweets in the night. So one more reason to avoid sweets in the night is teeth. It will cause teeth decay, tooth decay. Okay. Now, today class, we will not see what is the problem with the fruits. We will see that in diabetes class. <laughs> so this is one part what we are going to eat for when we have cravings. When we have cravings, you are going to eat food that will cause a stable glucose level. Will not create another spike. Otherwise, you will have to wake up in the night and eat again. Or when you wake up in the morning, you are very hungry. Okay. You have you noticed there are certain days when you wake up in the morning, you are extremely hungry and you want to eat suddenly. There are certain days, most of the days, where you are stable in the morning. You can start your day and then eat something. So this is the reason what you ate previous night. So you should document that. Now coming to the meal part during when this spike is happening. So we saw when there is a drop, what to eat. But the question is why this drop is happening? Because the spike is happening. Can we reduce the spike? That's a good question. So what will happen is you had a step. You focus now. Don't write. Now. Okay. So because you had a supper. You didn't have low glucose. You had a stable glucose. From here, the spike is not so high. Okay. But drop is high. So what we need is, we need to flatten this spike. This spike should not be like this. This spike should be like this. You understand? So option one is, we need to have this kind of a glucose fall. Slow glucose fall. Controlled glucose fall. Second is, we don't want a high spike. We want a balanced spike. <laughs> we are not using the word low spike. We are using the word balanced spike and controlled glucose fall. So these two concepts we'll understand. Control glucose, correct. So control glucose fall. We will eat foods that support that. Okay. We will for lower or balanced glucose spike. We will eat food that supports that. And coincidentally, both have common foods. <coughs> In your meal, this is the reason you should add fibers. This is the reason you should add vegetables and fruits in every meal. You understand? When you explain this to the client, okay, so there is an average nutritionist or dietitian, she will tell you add one uh, cucumber in your diet. Why, madam? What is your problem? Why should I do that? My stomach is good. People think that fiber is for stomach. Fiber is also for controlling glucose spike. Okay. I will give you one exercise today. Everyone will do that this week. Okay. This is an assignment. You don't need to write for that. You need to experiment on your own. Yeah. So one day you will drink Coke. As expected, Coke what drink means it's not that the whole day you will keep on drinking. Okay. No, just one glass. Yeah. So and you have a sudden glucose spike expected. Then you have refined fruit juice. Refined fruit juice, where they have removed all the fibers and the pulp and that is removed. The example is fruity. Good example. Yeah. Some orange juice ready-made, they also have removed the pulp. Some say we have the pulp inside. That's why we are costly. Okay. Both are useless. <laughs> so, Coke will cause a high spike. This refined juice will cause a still a spike. Agree? Now, third option. Can you lower this spike? So you have a juice which you are made, making at home and not refining it, not straining it. So juice which has the pulp. Everything is there. Okay. Now this juice. But when you make a juice, obviously there are some fibers which are going to lose. Orange juice, take example. Some fibers you are going to lose inherently. So for that, can you, the, the fourth option is the fruits. When you eat the fruits itself, that contains the fibers. This fibers reduces your glucose spike further. 
it helps you maintain lower it may helps you maintain balance level stable level stable fall balanced fall control fall this is a reason that you need to add fibers in your diet not for your stomach only if you have a good stomach you have no problem of constipation still you add fibers not for your stomach for your glucose control understand you explain this to the client now why you are adding fruits when you add fruits it also has some sugar so your cravings are solved okay now what is the sequence sequence of vegetables in the food at the start at the end and why write down write down when you want to eat vegetables start end or when you eat okay it's better question is when do you eat vegetables you you are following don't give provocation which you don't do so mention you eat vegetables start you eat during the food you eat at the end or you don't eat at all up that's also fine nothing wrong okay write down the chat during meal along with food many people do that good start and in between and not in end okay while lunch and dinner time with meal start of the meal vegetable along food along food many people they eat along the food now the second question is those who are saying along the food how much vegetable you eat is it like one cucumber for the whole family or there is a two cucumber in your own plate so i'm not saying one cucumber in your plate i'm saying two cucumber one in your plate very less one or two piece cucumber eating is not fiber okay one piece of uh, tomato is not sufficient then that is not useful dear so even if you are eating along with food at the end it is immaterial very less material what do you need to do how much you need to eat first when do you eat when do you eat there are three options in the in initially you start eat the five vegetables feel full then eat less food this will also prevent your glucose spike plus it will fill your stomach but there is a serious problem in this there is a serious problem i want to eat food yes i want to eat food everyone wants to eat food i want to enjoy the meal the problem is if you eat less i cannot enjoy the meal and the problem is the people don't agree if you tell the client you start your food with the vegetables there is a subconscious question in the client's mind ma'am then what will i eat i will get full now i want to enjoy my meal i want to enjoy my chicken my paneer everything i want to enjoy right i don't want to compromise on that mm -hmm. ideally the fruit the vegetables should be eaten initially so that it fills your stomach the stomach sets signal to the brain that you eat less plus it has the same effect which uh, juice versus fruit juice will cause some spike and if you have fruit whole fruit whole fruit because the whole fruit is mixed of sugar and uh, fibers it will cause less spike same factor is working when you are eating vegetables initially you understand but clients don't follow that and they don't like you if you say that so better is you eat vegetables during your meal or after your meal no problem while eating the food you can eat the vegetables after finishing you can have a plate a bowl and when you say the bowl they have the concept that bigger bowl i have to take say tell them don't say the a bowl of uh, vegetables the bowl size can be different i have a small bowl you have a big bowl and i like larger bowl yeah. tell them two cucumber or one cucumber one tomato one cucumber one carrot one radish half radish you understand this is for one person not for the whole family so this is how much to eat and when to eat so we understood the uh, first part that the cravings part the second part is to prevent the glucose spike what i am doing to prevent the glucose spike we are adding the vegetables don't tell the client that if you eat the most of the nutritionists that tradition they say this statement 
if you eat vegetables before the meal, you will feel food and you will eat less. But the client wants to eat more. I want to eat more. I want to enjoy the food. Objective is not to eat less. Objective is to prevent your glucose spike. Because if you prevent your glucose spike, you feel healthy, you feel happy, you feel energetic. Most of you feel laziness after the meal, you know, because of the glucose spike. Now, when you are feeling healthy, happy, that's why you are uh, to prevent glucose spike. You explain this concept to the client. When you explain this concept to the client, for them, it is a new concept. They will like you more. They will come to you again. They will refer their family and friends to you. And that's why you should eat vegetables. Now the next part. What is another food which we can add in the meal that stabilizes our glucose? The curd. Okay. Some people say yogurt. Actually, till now, I do not understand what is the difference in curd and yogurt. Can someone write in the chat? Yeah. And if you tell the client yogurt, they are like, I need to purchase the yogurt. Yogurt is costly than curd. Can I eat the curd? No, ma'am has not said curd. Uh, ma'am has said yogurt. So I have to eat yogurt. You understand there is a huge pressure to that. Okay. Just say by dahi khao, curd khao. Itna fancy word use kane ki koi zarot nahi. Right? Eat curd. Now, how can I eat curd? You can eat it like this. You can eat, put salt, sugar, whatever you like. Okay. Now, some people are like, sugar? I will come to that part. Yeah. Okay. So, the sugar, sugar itself is not causing your glucose spike. There are many things you are eating that is also causing your glucose spike, right? including fruits also. Don't think fruits are healthy. Fruits are also causing your glucose spike. Okay. They also have sugar. Yeah. Though the sugar is different, but it is still a sugar. It is getting, this fructose is getting converted to glucose in your body. It is also causing so remember, okay, sugar is not itself a harmful thing. You can eat, uh, you can uh, make a tak, buttermilk, simple, put equal amount of water or one, 200 ml of curd, 200 ml of water, anything is okay. Mix it well, put sugar, salt, jeera, jeera is cumin, right? So put cumin, cumin powder, whatever you like, put it in that. Now there is one more recipe. Uh, in Marathi, we call it koshimbir. So you take the curd, then grate your uh, all vegetables, whichever you have. Onion, potato, sorry. <laughs> Onion, I was checking whether you are awake. Huh? Onion, tomato, cucumber, radish, carrot, cabbage. Good colors, uh, coriander. Yeah. Uh, ideally, you should not put chili, but if you are like spicy food lover, you can put some chili seeds that will make it more spicy. Yeah. You can put chili also. Beetroot has no benefit effect here. So, and we'll see that. And this you can you eat as a raita, as a, with your rice, with your this thing or simple only. One katori is sufficient enough. This is a good mixture. But this is not replacing your fibers. This is not replacing your vegetables. There is a vegetable plate. Don't call it a bowl. Everyone has a different size of bowl. So when people get confused, your bowl means there has to be fruit bowl. I have to maintain at home. I have to buy one bowl. Then I have to buy multiple fruits. Keep it in table like it looks like in movies. All these problematic things are there. Make it simple. Eat two cucumber baba. One cucumber, one radish, one cucumber, one potato. Whichever is available. As per your, not potato, tomato. As per your, whichever season is available. You, whichever is per your budget, you eat. Okay. Now, ma'am, uh, tomato is very costly nowadays. Okay. Ma'am has told me, then wife is fighting with the husband, I have to lose weight for you. Uh, and uh, you are not buying the tomato, all those. So tell them very clearly, whatever is available as per your budget, as per market, buy that, eat it, all these vegetables. Don't mention some fancy food, avocado. Okay. There is nothing additional benefit you are getting in avocado. Tell me one one mineral, one property in avocado which is not there in my easy foods. 
Why should I buy one twenty rupees one piece? No, I cannot afford that. I can afford two rupees one piece, which is that fruit, which is that vegetable. I can buy that. I can buy cucumber. That is my limit. You understand? An avocado I hate. You might like avocado because you are a fancy person. We, we in the common public, we have never eaten avocado, and those who have never eaten avocado, they will always hate it. Yeah. So don't mention fancy fancy foods to the people. Keep it simple. To become a famous, to become a successful nutritionist dietitian, you don't need fancy food. Come to the ground level. Ground reality, you need to understand what people are eating at their home. Suggest from that thing. So they have a plate at their home. A thali is there. From that thali only you have to suggest. Don't invent something new and put it in their new thali. No, it will not work. Don't bring something from your plate and put it in their thali. It will not work. Okay. Beetroot has very less iron. Some people think it has iron because it is red in color. That is a color actually. <laughs> yeah. It has very less iron. It is a poor source of iron. It doesn't heal anemia. It doesn't treat anything. Okay. Some people don't like the beetroot taste also. Uh, you should put beetroot in pav bhaji just for color sake. There is no other <laughs> benefit to it. Okay. Spinach, tomato has more iron than beetroot. Even if it is not red. Green leafy vegetables are more iron. So two things we are done. One is vegetables. Then second is curd or curd combination with vegetables. Third thing. So what we are doing is, you remember what we are doing smartly is, we are not telling the client to add something new. We are not telling the client, no, no, don't eat sugar. Don't eat sweet. Don't eat rice. The client is like already sad. They feel like they have some disease now. They have to change their lifestyle. No. I want to do something for lifetime. Not for one week. For one month. So you have to tell the client something they can stick for lifetime. And only they can stick if you select something from their own plate. Own thali. Okay. Now the third, cinnamon. Most of the families have it. Those who do not have, it is a very less expensive thing. 20 rupees, 200 gram. <laughs> Sufficient for the whole week, for the whole family. So can I buy something that reduces my glucose spike, that reduces my weight, that reduces my craving for the food in 20 rupees? I don't want 120 rupees avocado. Why? <laughs> I want simple thing. And that should taste also good. Cinnamon tastes good. It enhances the smell of the food. When you visit some bakery or something, the flavor which you are getting, that is a cinnamon flavor. That, that makes you feel good. Okay, That flavor itself makes you good. And the cinnamon is a property that it reduces your cravings. It reduces your glucose spike also. And it reduces your glucose drop also. So both the benefits are there. So reducing your glucose spike and from this spike drop also. So the, it becomes a controlled form. Cinnamon. Now how to eat the cinnamon? That is a difficult question. Anyone would like to answer? What is the best way to eat the cinnamon? Menga hai, bahut menga hai, supriya. Itna fancy nahi chahiye. We don't want fancy cinnamon tea. Hmm. Soups. I have to make the soup. My wife will kill me. The burden. Without burden. Huh. Cinnamon water in the morning. No burden. Add powder in vegetables. Easiest thing. Add them in vegetable preparation. Easiest. Sprinkle anywhere you want. On the tabletop. On your head top. Anywhere you can sprinkle. Who was that on the top? Shirisha. Adding cinnamon in the food. Very easy. While cooking. Very easy. Half teaspoon cinnamon powder with warm water. Not bad. Okay. For eating cinnamon, you don't need to drink sugar and milk and tea. Yeah. Those who said cinnamon tea, hey, there is a step for that. I have to make the tea first. What are you going to do after your dinner? You are going to make tea. After your dinner, 
and you want to prevent your glucose uh, calories conscious and you are eating uh, drinking sorry drinking milk sugar and everything the cinnamon is no useful make it very easy ah use easy word na supriya then write cinnamon water don't write cinnamon tea hmm. okay so okay the easiest answer is sprinkle your cinnamon on wherever you want either in your vegetables or your paratha try it okay on your paratha on uh, in your vegetables while cooking also okay or salad raita when you are making that koshim beer or raita put some cinnamon if number one it will enhance the smell children will feel good family will feel good you that creates happiness cinnamon number two it will prevent your glucose spike it will prevent your glucose fall both the things will happen now ideal way to eat cinnamon is any preparation as long as the cinnamon is fresh okay so you don't never buy cinnamon powder don't buy cinnamon tea all the cinnamon properties are gone already all the beneficial things the antioxidants are oxidized no benefit so cinnamon you have to take the bark yeah the cinnamon sticks and ground it whenever you need maybe for one day two days stocks that's sufficient easy if it is remaining then you can put it in your plants plants will also have a better glucose control give will give more fruits so the correct way of eating cinnamon is freshly grounded cinnamon powder in any preparation either raw or either with something warm water or your vegetables while cooking in your masala tadka or uh, your paratha or your raita okay. number 4 is little fancy yeah and you will need to buy this not available in most of the homes apple cider vinegar okay now uh, there are many apple cider vinegar available in the market okay there are few complications with that i tell you what are the complications number one people confuse vinegar with apple cider vinegar so vinegar is different thing you use to wash your utensils and cleaning things and apple though it is a cooking product yeah you should not use vinegar in cooking food okay chinese also no so there is apple cider vinegar so apple cider vinegar is made up from apple raw apples now it should be taken with the mother now there is a concept with mother and without mother so mother means it is not filtrated so there are particles at the bottom of the bottle you will see that there are still some particles then it is not clear it is not transparent that is a correct way number 3 it should be in a glass bottle not plastic bottle and that is the biggest mistake most of the marketing uh, companies they are doing so uh, i am manufacturing my own uh, apple cider vinegar at a small scale and i sell it also if you wish to buy you can buy from me also it is sent in a uh, glass bottle it will have mother means not refined it will not be transparent and it will have a good test it will have good effect also it will not be harmful now how to take if you wish you can whatsapp me for buying that otherwise you can buy any brand no problem now i'll say it commercially okay? now how to take apple cider vinegar so there are only two correct ways to take it there is no third correct way okay number one you sprinkle it on your vegetables or fruits if you like it will uh, create some sour taste very interesting okay and uh, you can sprinkle some salt on your vegetables or without salt also but it will create sour taste it will prevent two things one is it will prevent a glucose spike it will prevent glucose fall suddenly it will have a balanced glucose spike and stable controlled fall both the things one spoon half spoon to sprinkle on your vegetables the number two way is take one spoon of uh, apple cider vinegar with mother one spoon small spoon teaspoon okay very small quantity 5 ml we are talking of less than 5 ml 
fill it with complete glass water. So much dilute you have to do. And then drink. While drinking, drink it from above so that you don't touch. It doesn't, it touch, it should touch less to your teeth. The reason is it's very acidic. Okay. So never ever drink this apple cider vinegar with your spoon. <laughs> it will burn your esophagus and mouth. Never ever do that mistake. Okay. 500 ml apple cider vinegar and 200 ml water. The whole glass water. More water, no problem. You have to drink like that. Very diluted. Very, very, very diluted. And it will do, it will immediately, I will tell you, try this tonight or next time after you order from me. If, you, if your apple cider vinegar is correct formulation, you will have no cravings. I'm not saying less craving. I'm saying no cravings of the food after your meal. That immediate craving, you have your meal, there is an immediate craving that will not happen. You have your food and after 90 minutes, again, you have a glucose fall. That's why you are craving. That will also not happen. Will not happen. Okay. I'm not saying less. I'm saying will not happen. Apple cider vinegar, typically you should take with the meals or after the meal. Best part. Any. You can take lunch, dinner, anything. Okay. Some people say that it causes acidity. But maybe they are not diluting enough. If you dilute apple cider vinegar properly, it will not cause acidity. It will cause a stable <laughs> supply. <Yeah. laughs> Kalani asked the same question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> one time, two times a day, sufficient. One time, sufficient. Don't take apple cider vinegar empty stomach. You should not. Okay. Oh, uh, at least one time in a day, uh, I put apple cider vinegar in my vegetables, then whatever is remaining in the plate, that taste is very nice then because it has some flavor of vegetables also. I mean the raw vegetables. So I put it in that glass at the after finishing my vegetables, put it in a glass, fill the glass with water, then drink it. Yeah. Anything. So that chemical formulation is like that, that it prevents glucose spike and it causes stable glucose level. Okay. If you eat sugar, if you eat sweets, there is going to be sudden glucose spike. That sudden spike will be prevented with apple cider vinegar. If it is a correct formulation. Sudden drop will be controlled drop. Okay. If it is with sugar, you are taking, if you are taking, if you are taking with the deserts, I mean, okay. With this, you eat a lot of shoe. Uh, today, you eat a lot of dessert. So, if you're expected to have a sh overshoot of your glucose spike and overfall, that will be lesser spike, lesser fall. But if it is with the so much dessert you have eaten, try to eat some vegetables or fruits along with that. If you're outside, you cannot eat vegetables or fruits. The easiest way is or uh, drink juice. When I travel 15 days in a day, I have a protocol. Whichever hotel I go, the number one step, I order a big basket. And I order vegetables for me. After every meal, because I don't eat vegetables in the restaurant or the hotels, uh, contamination and all those things. And I don't know when they have cut. So I eat it in my room. Okay. Any question till now? I will remember a few things in the meanwhile. You can write down the question. But yeah, when I say vegetables, I mean salad beer. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So Usha has asked a good question. And he substitute for apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is not a costly thing. If you buy one bottle, it will be sufficient for one or two months. Number one. Number two, it is uh, available. Okay. For you know, many people buy my brand. And I have a farmhouse and we have the manufacturing plant for that. It can be taken by all age groups. Okay. And uh, person with GI issues. That's a good question, Ramya. Can person with GI issue take apple cider vinegar? So if you have diarrhea, constipation, no problem. Correct. But if you have gastroesophageal reflex, then you should avoid it. You have acidity problem, lot of acidity. Yeah. Then you should avoid it. Mm, you, Jolin has a question. Can person without gallbladder take apple cider vinegar? I'm not sure on this answer. I don't know. I don't know. Better to ask gastroenterologist or maybe avoid it. So if you don't like it, you can avoid it. No problem. So is there some substitute? Usha has asked an interesting question. Can I have something that reduces my glucose spike? May not be as effective as apple cider vinegar, but can I still have something that should be available at our home? Answer is yes. Lemons. Okay. So now understand this difference. If you don't have apple cider vinegar, the spike is like this. If you have apple cider vinegar, the spike is like this. If you have lemons, the spike is between them. Okay. If you have lemons, the spike, the height of the spike is still less as compared to no lemon. And the drop is also little gradual. Now, how much lemon to take? <clears throat> How to eat lemon? Yeah. So how, write down your your answer. How do you like lemon? Yeah. Correct. So some people avoid curd in the night. It's okay. Juice along with salt. Juice along with sugar. Juice with water. Lemon. So lemon squeeze with water. No salt. No sugar. Lemon on vegetables. Gravy. Salad. Lemon on fruits, lemon on rice, <coughs> lemon on anything and everything. That is the easiest preparation to do. But there is one thing you have to take care. You should never cook lemon. So many people, what they do a mistake, uh, they squeeze the, they are preparing some vegetable, some vegetable dish, veg fried rice or poha. While cooking it, they squeeze the lemon. Wrong. For two reasons. Number one, uh, the beneficial effect is gone. Number two, it may cause you acidity. So you try it next time. If you are the person who, or you have someone in your family, lemon causes you acidity. So give them raw lemon on the top. The squeeze. Not during preparation. So you should not cook the lemon. Understood? And lemon has no restriction. You can take it empty stomach, after meal, before meal, anytime. Okay. Anyone here has a lemon cravings? Read on the chat? Yes. I'm also answering. Yes. Lemon cravings? If you have lemon cravings, there is one diagnosis. You are deficient in magnesium. So there are certain days when you have lemon cravings or you are a person who always has lemon cravings. You should take some magnesium supplements. If you take that, it will resolve your lemon cravings. Try it for one week. Your problem is solved. Now, Parul is saying her magnesium is okay. So, have you tested it? Is there a medical report? 
Yes, you are tested. Okay, that's a good part. In that case, there are always some people who are craving for something. There are people who crave sugar. There are people who will crave spicy. Some crave lemon. Absolutely okay. <laughs> okay, there is nothing wrong in that. So now why you crave spicy food? You are getting addicted to it. Okay, we will see that. Possible Aprajita. So lemon cravings can be linked to sour craving. Yeah. So I think it is better than sweets craving. Because it is controlling your glucose spike, it is controlling your glucose fall. We'll take five minutes break. In that break, you can go, come back, you can eat your lunch, dinner, supper, or you can write down your questions in the chat. Five minutes break. We will write down what we have learned today. Yeah, drink water. Don't forget to drink water, okay? Smile when you are doing it. You know why people get overweight? They don't drink sufficient water. They don't smile. They don't smile while cooking. They don't smile while eating. They don't smile in the classes. They attend the classes without video. That causes obesity, causes of obesity. Please ask more questions. I will answer that. We learned today the concept of sudden glucose spike, sudden glucose fall, which is responsible for your cravings immediately after the meal or 90 minutes after the meal. We learned how to, what to eat during these cravings. Yeah. We learned what to avoid during these cravings. We learned how to manage this glucose spike, how to prevent this glucose spike from very low to very high, then sudden drop. So we learned that frequent meals, it will help you not have a higher spike from your baseline. If you are hungry, if you do not have supper, your baseline is very low. From this low, there is a spike, which is wrong. So imagine if you have a supper at five, your baseline is high. From this, the spike is low. Even if both are reaching at the same level, because you're eating the same food. You understand? 
simply adding supper is reducing your the difference between the spike then we learned what are the foods we should eat to prevent the spike okay or have a lower glucose spike then we learned how to have a control fall control glucose fall we don't want sudden fall on control glucose fall so next day when we wake up we are not extremely hungry next day when we wake up we don't have craving 90 minutes after food we don't have craving there is another benefit to it you feel emotionally good you feel energetic if you have controlled low glucose spike and control fall you will feel more energetic you will not feel lazy you will not feel sleepy after your meals if you are the person who feels sleepy after your meals the problem is you are having so much high glucose spike so you need to add vegetables you need to reduce your sugars okay now if you tell a client to prevent a glucose spike or to prevent your weight you stop sweets that is a average nutritionist will do it will not help no one will follow you but if you tell them the concept of glucose spike and you tell them these are the things you should do to prevent the glucose spike to prevent the sudden fall and then you should reduce your sugar also they will listen to you. so number fifth is reduce the sugar fiber curd cinnamon apple cider vinegar lemon and last one is reduce sweets obviously you cannot continue eating sweets and think that you will not have problem it will have problem but if you want to reduce those problems and still eat your sugar still eat your sweets then you add these things at least you will have lower cravings if you have craving for eating five rasgulla you will eat only two three four still a success you reduce one rasgulla right there are going to be days no you don't want to reduce so there are going to be days where you are like you are disturbed emotionally you are feeling depressed and you want to eat more it's okay you are a human being even when those days you can still have apple cider vinegar the solution is still there you understand we'll see that in cholesterol how the sugar and the cholesterol is linked okay so apple cider vinegar will not reduce your cholesterol cholesterol but it will reduce your glucose spike and when it reduces glucose spike it helps somewhere down the line but if you are talking that will apple cider vinegar uh, reduce my cholesterol answer is no and that is not the objective the objective is healthy lifestyle the healthy food healthy emotional level and healthy glucose level i will take questions from starting so yolin said frequency of meat uh, eating meals will it not cause frequent spikes no dear bhai if you are hungry then you eat there is a spike higher spike from the baseline but if you eat something the spike from this base this is your baseline now so difference is less even if you are having same spike one aspect second aspect because you have certain glucose level your glucose is not low so you don't eat fast you eat little less as compared to this that's why this spike if you would have been here the spike would have been this but because you had a supper the spike would be this even if you had the same spike for example even if you eat bad food even if you had the same spike but the difference will be less so that's the benefit of frequent eating you understand but frequent eating doesn't mean that you eat equally four times okay no you have to divide your meals huh? so if you are eating total 10 chapati plus half kg rice in a day no. so you will divide it total into four or three meals not 10 chapati and half kg rice and 10 chapati again. <laughs> and again one more
now kameshwar is saying that she drinks garlic lemon ginger apple cider vinegar boil it and then put honey in that there is a serious problem in this so when you are boiling your lemon and apple cider vinegar not good the formulation is changing it is affecting the better way is you boil your ginger and garlic uh, i'm not sure many people will like garlic in this combination okay but those who like garlic and ginger or only ginger you boil it so how do you boil it how do you make this preparation this is very important okay so remove the skins of the ginger no need to grate because while grating you can injure your nails and fingers and your husband doesn't know how to grate so this is something you have to order someone to do you should not do by your own and then uh, cut slices thin slices or chunks of ginger whatever thin you are comfortable and start take a big gunch big bowl of water 1 liter 2 liter whatever you want put sufficient ginger in that slices cubes and boil it when it starts boiling okay so it will start boiling after 10 minutes after that again you have to keep it for 15 20 minutes the objective is the water should reduce by 50% so your water become 1 liter to half liter that is a correct the water color will also change now but you cannot wait for it to cool down that is a serious problem so very easy solution you add half liter more water in that room temperature water half liter problem solved suddenly it reaches the room uh, comfortable level where you can drink it and the quantity is also sufficient enough now the taste is also good enough now to enhance the taste you can add apple cider vinegar you can add lemon this simple itself ginger water itself is helpful but still you can add that this is helpful for gastrointestinal we will see that in gastrointestinal chapter acv tablets available in the market the effervescent and all you should never ever eat it and drink it the reason i tell you apple cider vinegar is made like that there is a process to make it one step you do wrong the formulation is wrong you cannot refine it there is a refined apple cider vinegar available in the most of the by most of the companies but it is not useful it should have mother in it if you put it in the plastic bottle it is contaminated or you cannot drink it can you put acid it is so high acidic you should never put it in glass bottle it has to be in glass bottle okay number 2 the effervescence tablet how they are able to create effervescence you need some chemical for that you need some formulation for that apple cider itself will not create cause effervescence yeah so what are you putting it so those companies are not disclosing what is the other content they are putting inside it do you want to take that you understand so you don't want to take some substance called preservative you don't want to take a substance called coloring agents no you want to have a pure apple cider vinegar there is no point effervescent tablet and all that okay it is useless and harmful tea craving so what is the problem you are addicted to it drink more tea no problem usha has asked if some fancy question is drinking alkaline water good water lemon pudina cucumber yeah if you can do do it there is no harm in that okay there is some beneficial effect but it's not a mandatory thing okay and if you tell your client to do this uh, alkaline water put this 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 she will do two days three days four days and after that she will throw away everything okay so it is something which has to come from you i want to do it it takes lot of motivation lot of efforts manage it prevent infection put it then wait for 5 hours to drink one glass it's fancy and good when you go to five star hotel yeah yeah at home i tried i could not manage that Ah, oh, if you anyone here uh, drinks alkaline water daily, if you can drink it for like occasions or when you have party or something or you are want to relax, 
today not a ginger tea but i want to today not a ginger water but i will drink a fancy alkaline water so that day is good Shweta has asked an interesting question. Now, the, is the effect of craving for foods same when we fast or we do not fast on those days? So, under the, it is a crucial part. We are going to come to the next part, which is the fasting part. How fasting helps or does not help? Some people believe that fasting will help you for uh, your weight loss. It will not. I tell you. Three aspects to this. Number one, fat loss means does not mean weight loss. If you want to lose fat, you are not going to lose weight. It may happen that you may increase weight if you are successful. Because while losing fat, you will add proteins that will get replaced. The fat is not going to evaporate through your sweat. <laughs> Yeah, the more you sweat, the thinner you will become and your more cholesterol will go. Hey, where it will go? You, you are not sweating out your fat or cholesterol. So your fat will get converted. Your fat will be replaced by your protein, will be replaced by protein in your body. It may increase your weight, which is completely accepted, agreeable and understood. When you lose fat, you will not lose weight. The second part of the fasting, there is a serious complication to it. If you crash fast, if you fast for 5 days, 10 days, 15 days, 1 month, there are two problems. Number one, the willpower gives away. You have a very strong desire to lose weight or do things and then eat healthy stuff, do exercise, fast. 5 days, 3 days, 7 days. One day will come after 9 days or 15 days or 1 month. You will lose your willpower. Yeah. Your sudden cravings will come up because you, either you are emotionally disturbed or because it is inherently you have cravings. Something will happen. You will lose your balance. <coughs> Whatever the reason, you lose balance. So you have a fast with the objective to reduce weight and some imbalance happens. Either it is emotional disturbance, fight at home, something at office, Sudden cravings, menstrual cycle, exertion, disturbance in your sleep. Yeah, anything it happens. Yeah, some travel, something, something. Suddenly, your willpower will drop and suddenly you will have a cravings for everything and anything in the world. You will start eating pizza, burger, sweets, chocolates and everything. And you will decide that weight loss is not for me. This statement many people say. Because you are trying it wrong. You are trying which is opposed to your nature. Which is opposed to your thali. What is your thali at your home? You have to manage that part. Don't fight with your nature. Your nature is to eat good food. Okay. You add certain things. Your nature is to eat five rasgulla. I am not telling you to stop rasgulla. You try to reduce one. But add certain things. You understand? Some people say join the gym to reduce weight. Joining gym never reduces weight. Paying money for gym does not reduce weight. Doing exercise reduces weight. And to do exercise, we don't need to join any gym and pay money. If I want to do exercise, I can do simple exercise at home. Jump, walk, stairs, down. Take a dog for the walk, take the child for the walk, take your parents for the walk. Run. Buy some dumbbells. Only 1 kg. Don't buy 4 kg, 2 kg. One, only 1 kg. So I will tell you a funny story. <coughs> Sudden motivation to do a gym. But I don't want to go gym. I want to have gym at my home. So in the gym, other people are using it. It is so sweaty, so dirty. No, I will buy my own gym. Okay, wow, that's good. So, one call away, yeah, one order away. So, gym at home. Sir, done. 
wow so good so nice all appreciation everything i'm appreciating wow i had done good work never ever use the gym for the one day also okay so not a good idea i think i should start some slow okay okay i will buy weights uh, but they are kept in the room no i will bring it in the hall so whenever i get time i use it whenever i see those weights i will use it so 4 kg weights that suits me yeah i am a man uh, my what my daughter will think and all so 4 kg weight one day i tried it then i had a pain in my hands and i stopped it failed six months break six months break very stupid idea then i went to amazon bought 1 kg weight <laughs> 1 kg dumbbells two dumbbells very thin my daughter can also use it yeah and kept it in near tv so whenever i get bored start lifting 1 kg my daughter laughs everyone laughs what 1 kg i said at least i'm doing it that's the thing yeah i'm not doing it for losing weight or some muscles i don't want to go wwf for champion or something i want to feel fit that's it gym cannot do outside inside 4 kg dumbbells cannot do this 1 kg i'm feeling light because i get motivated to do it it's not exertion for me it's within my comfort zone so what is my comfort zone my comfort zone stay at home i don't want to go dirty gym outside sweaty gym but i don't want to do heavy exercise <laughs> but i want to do gym so what is it 1 kg now 1 kg whatever exercise i can do this this then this then whatever i want to do yeah simple 5 minutes 10 minutes whenever i want to do i will do it no restriction no rule how many times a day uh, no restriction 15 minutes 10 minutes 5 minutes whichever is my mood there is no target you should do three reps of this <laughs> here you are ordering me to do so every human mind is like that okay so what is your comfort level you want to do five reps one rep sufficient enough four times a week sufficient enough the objective of doing your gym or any exercise is to make you feel good okay like we say that you do your work don't look for the fruits similarly do your exercise don't look for the fruits don't expect that your weight will lose you will lose fat it is a by product it will happen never ever check your weight have a lost weight and suddenly one day you see one kg has gone up and you are like frustrated i will start eating everything and anything in the world i will eat you also if you say me not to eat anything and i look obese i will kill you yeah because you are so frustrated then you do something and you have a fast you do some exercise and one day you check your weight still same then you check your weight still same then after one month you check your weight still same and you feel demotivated you should never buy the weight machine yeah you should never check your weight the objective is not to lose weight objective is to lose fat objective is to feel happy okay to feel comfortable now the third aspect of the fasting so the first aspect was you will lose some disturbance will happen and you will lose your balance go out number 2 whatever fasting you are doing it don't do it with the intention of losing weight okay number 3 concept number 2 addition is the fasting doesn't help you lose weight okay the correct food will help you lose weight so when you are fasting it's not that your cholesterol is evaporating and everything is happening it is not going to happen okay it will not happen in one month it will not happen in six months it will not happen in one week if it happens in one week or one month there is a third problem we'll come to that that is a very serious problem but second point still we are at the second point that you need to change certain things you need to change your lifestyle this segment is very difficult to follow huh? change your lifestyle i don't want to change my lifestyle i don't want to come out of my comfort zone i want to be i want to do things which is comfortable to me but still lose my fat can you do that 
So think what is your thali, think what is your lifestyle, think what suits you. You like one kg weight, you like four kg weight, you like gym, you like walk, do whatever you like. So fasting doesn't reduce your cholesterol. Number three, you fast, very rigorous, strenuous. You lose your weight. Okay, maybe one month, six months, one week, whatever you're doing, some crazy things, you lose weight. Now there is a problem. Two problems. Because you are fasting or you are eating late, less, your body is acclimatized to less food. You will need to continue this for a lifetime. One problem. Number two problem. The basal metabolic rate. Now because you are fasting, you are consuming less energy, your basal metabolic rate is lower. So earlier your metabolic rate was like this. Now it has become like this. When you start eating normal food, okay, your basal metabolic rate will remain same. So what will happen is your utilization of components of food, carbohydrate, fat, proteins will be continue to be less. You understood? When you are eating, so everyone watch now, stop writing. When you are eating, when you are normal eating, your basal metabolic rate is like this, where your carbohydrate, fat, proteins are utilized at a particular rate. There is a balance. When you eat less, your basal metabolic rate has, after a few weeks, it has reduced. So your body is acclimatized to less utilized proteins, carbohydrate, fat. Now you start eating normal food, but your basal metabolic rate is going to be less. What will happen? So body is utilizing carbohydrate, protein, fats less, but you are eating more. So the excess will be deposited. Very harmful. The third part of the third concept is it can cause nutrient deficiency. So when you fast, it can cause certain nutrient deficiency. Now, some people say I take supplements. Supplement is not sufficient for the simple reason that as human beings, as scientists, we do not know which all our supplements are in their food which are required. We don't have a complete list. Whatever list we have, those supplements are available in the market. But those supplements are not sufficient. Either the dose is not sufficient or combination is wrong. There are some supplements where calcium and iron both are there. Both will not get absorbed. Okay. There are some supplements where two minerals are there. Both will not get absorbed. Right. That is a problem. Supplement is not sufficient. It is not a replacement for your good food. Number four part of the third part. Hormone deficiency. Thyroid special. Okay. So there is a concept called rebound. Refractory weight gain. Okay, so you do certain things, strenuous fasting, long fasting, you have nutrient deficiency, some imbalance, or you were predisposed to hypothyroidism. You were predisposed, but you were having a healthy lifestyle, normal lifestyle. But now here, <coughs> you got hypothyroidism. Your hypothyroid function level normally has decreased by some rate. Now, even if you continue to eat less, you will continue to have weight gain. Even if you continue to eat less, you will have refractory weight gain. What is the meaning of refractory? You do anything and everything, the weight gain will continue. You eat less, you exercise, you take medicines, weight gain will continue. And you will get dependent on thyroid medicine. That is another problem. So four problems. Yeah. So fasting has three major things. One is you will give way. Your willpower will give way. There is going to be turbulence happening. Okay. You will lose willpower. Second, it doesn't have the long term fasting, the crash fasting. They don't have any effect on your body. Beneficial effect. Intermittent fasting, it has a, I personally believe it has a beneficial, lot of beneficial effects, including especially the willpower part. 
but you should not do fasting for the objective of weight loss. The number third part is the weight gain after the fasting. After you stop the fasting because of four factors. Starting from last, the hormone, the mineral deficiency, lower base amount metabolic rate. What was the first one? Who will remind? Write down in the chat. Who remembers? Very good. Okay. Questions? Till now, please ask questions. If you have easy question, foolish question, stupid question, I will sincerely answer. Because everyone has that question. And that is a basic question. So don't be afraid to ask any type of question. Don't worry. Usha, while looking, she looks very thin, but she is asking this question. Okay. You have three minutes to ask questions. Kalani, you please send a report of this patient. I will need to verify and also include um, HbA1c report also for this patient. So Kalani has one client with, who has uh, high fasting sugar with a normal postprandial. So we need to document it first. Okay. Then we see no, SCB. Sorry, HbA1c. We will have one class on fancy things. Okay. So the title of the class will be fancy, fancy things. Avocado oil, then some ghee, then green coffee, then keto diet, then vegan diet, hippies, all those things. Yeah. We will have one fancy, fancy things. Supriya is asking question that someone in my family drinks a protein shake with the objective of losing weight as a replacement to breakfast and dinner. There are two serious problems in this. Okay. One, you go and check that protein milkshake powder. Okay. It will mention that two columns it will mention. One is your dietary requirement. Okay. Daily dietary requirement for calcium, protein, this, this, this. Then it will mention each 100 gram contents. And when you see this table, you will feel, wow, my dietary requirement is fulfilled. Madam, you have to eat 100 grams to fulfill that. So you have a 1 kg box. Are you eating 100 gram in one sitting and finishing that box in 10 days? No. You have a Horlicks bone vita 200 gram package that is sufficient for your child for one month. Right? So to have your dietary requirement fulfilled by those protein things or shakes or powder, you need to eat unrealistic quantity, which you cannot do. 
very high quantity. The number two, it is not the world. So if you have protein shake, if you have protein powder, then only you will have high protein diet. No, not necessary. You can have high protein diet in veg food as well as non veg food. Both. We'll see that. Plus, nothing can replace your breakfast and dinner. This person will land up in a serious hormonal issues very soon. Okay. Either this person is athletic, bodybuilder, or non athletic, is completely misguided. You know, most of the protein shakes in the market, how they are sold. I will tell you the story. There is a protein powder, half kg box, cost is 500 rupees for that half kg. Means one gram is one rupee. The dietary requirement to fulfill per day is 100 grams. You cannot eat 100 gram of that thing. Yeah. At the end, they also mentioned that per serving is two spoons. Two spoon is at the max 10 gram, 20 gram. That's it. Okay. So you are getting it very less. Now this. Now this. Any company. I'm talking of all the brands. Okay. We should not try to promote particular your own company. We should not try to demotivate other companies. Also. So next time avoid branding your own things. Okay. This is not a platform. Okay. So. This final rupees, MRP is there. The patient buys for that. Okay. So the manufacturing cost is 80 rupees. The manufacturing company. The distributor gets around 50 rupees. The retailer gets around 50 to 100 rupees. The remaining part goes in certain ways. The referral channels and all. So if you go to a gym and someone is telling you that you should eat this protein powder, remember, out of 500, 200 rupees he is getting. If you go to any practitioner and some practitioner tells you, no, you should eat this protein powder to this so that you have a good pregnancy, good motherhood, good lactation, good child, good growth, everything good, good, good. Yeah. So number one, it does not satisfy your requirement. Number two, there is a substitute which is a good, which is a better thing, not a substitute, a natural tube. This protein is a substitute, <laughs> but there is a natural tube in, at your home, which you should be eating. Number three, that person is getting 200 rupees out of 500 rupees in this package to refer you. <coughs> the distributor is getting 50. The retailer, the shop owner is getting only 80 to 100. But this person telling you, you should take this is getting 200 rupees, which is the highest amount, more than manufacturer also. You like it? There is nothing wrong if you are the one who is doing it, but if you are the client who is doing it, that is wrong. Okay. And if you are a practitioner who gives it to every and any client without me, then it is wrong. Some students come to me and say that, sir, I got a job at a gym as a nutritionist dietitian. So I said, congrats. Then after 15 days, she calls and says, Sir, they are asking me to write this protein powder and prescribe to all the patients and market protein powder. I said, that is the part of the job. It is expected. <laughs> right? If you are working in a gym, the one of the major revenue sources is that. And if you go there, they want you to do that. And if you cannot do that, then you should not be doing that job. In your own practice, you can choose whether you want to do or not. So now what to tell the client? What are the different better normitudes, not substitute. This protein powder, protein shake is a normitude, substitute. The normitude which we have at home. Okay. Non-veg, veg, we will take both. In non-veg, meat or mutton, we should avoid. Though it is high in protein, but it has high cholesterol also. Okay. We avoid that. So the good protein source is, in the non-veg is, the fish, the chicken. The best one, and the easiest one is the egg, the egg white. Now fish is difficult to get, difficult to prepare, fresh fish, smell, all those. The chicken is easier, but still has certain problems. The egg, less costly, easy to prepare, multiple ways, 
most of the homes even if you are a veg, pure vegetarian home other family members are veg they can still allow you you can buy one simple stove keep one uh, bowl for boiling your eggs or one pan for frying your eggs right now how to eat the eggs correctly the simple is to remove your yolk egg yolk the yellow part and eat the white part that's it okay yolk is going to be rich in cholesterol for children you should give them yolk for adults you should give i mean for children you should get yolk and white both yeah so and for adults you should only give egg white okay now it doesn't matter whether you buy antibiotic free cage free organic eating hen rock uh, sorry hen egg or uh, inorganic eating everyone is eating the same thing okay what is inorganic what is organic are they eating plastics and cement that is an inorganic thing. <laughs> organic means they are eating the food only. Okay. Right. Cage free and all those. That is not going to change the quality of the egg. But what is going to change the quality of the egg is whether it is a country egg or it is a uh, whatever is the egg called. Okay. The boiler egg. Understand. So the country egg has real more properties. Now the eggs which is available in the market, the white egg which is available in the market if you try to hatch it, it will the baby will not come out. Okay, it will be bigger in size. It will look white. It will have a longer lifespan. Means you can keep it at your home for five days, seven days, ten days. The white, the normal egg which you eat. Then there is a country egg, the Gaurani eggs, which a hen has given by a natural process. She was not pumped the hormones. This egg will be small in size yellow in color, brown in color and if you hatch it the baby will come out the chick will come out and most likely if you are lucky you will be able to see the difference that there is a red streak inside the yolk yes, it's the embryo this egg is more healthy or healthier in terms of many minerals and things, benefits including uh, joint pains then certain nutrients which brain growth is for brain growth is required okay then certain unknown things which we don't know this is obviously better if you cannot find this still any egg is good enough it will have all the proteins which you need almost all amino acids now there are few amino acids which might be missing in the egg okay most of this requirement is fulfilled with the egg so you can fill it with milk that's it egg is the best quality protein because of its composition because it is a pure protein the egg white whatever is missing you can fulfill it with the milk problem solved vegetarian in vegetarian diet the good source of protein your legumes take any legumes now the problem is when you eat dal you dilute it so much and you eat very less. You take 100 gram rice and 10 gram, 20 gram dal, legumes, pulses, right? Wrong. 100 gram rice, 100 gram legumes. Then your protein requirement is fulfilled. Another is when we are talking of proteins, we are not talking whether it has a lot of carbs or not. Okay, any food you eat. So what will you eat, dear, my dear Parul? If you don't eat rice and legumes, if you say both have carbs, what do you have remaining? Only non-veg food then. Soybean. Now soybean chunks and soybean seeds. Soybean chunks are fibers. Less protein as compared to soybean seeds. Less nutrients as compared to soybean seeds. So you should eat soybean seeds. How to eat soybean seeds? Most of the seeds, the process is similar. Either you eat rajma, soybean seeds, chowli seeds, or barbati seeds, any seeds. Chana, chole, simple process. Lukewarm water, soak it overnight. In the morning, wash it very well. Not with washing powder, just by changing the waters. 
wash it very well because it will develop E. coli. All these legumes, they will develop E. coli by overnight water. That's why most of the people, it doesn't suit you. Then, uh, those who are hard uh, legumes, okay, like soya, soya bean uh, nuts, soya bean seeds, chowle seeds. So you can uh, put it in pressure cooker for one or two whistles and then fry it like normal. All other, everyone knows how to fry it. Yeah. Whatever way you want to make a preparation, dry gravy, anything is okay, semi gravy, only water gravy, that is good enough. You can eat it raw, uh, I mean, you can eat it single, you can eat it with chapati, bread, rice, anything is okay. Soybean chunks is not the perfect way to tell a client to satisfy your calcium and protein environment. Soybean seeds are the important. When you read in the book, soybean, it means soybean seeds, not soybean chunks. How the chunks are made? You take soybean seeds, drain out the oil, crush it, drain out the oil, whatever is the bhusa remaining, that becomes the soybean chunks, soya chunks. That is good for taste and uh, for filling your stomach and uh, fibers. <coughs> Parul has asked an interesting question. So I have mentioned in country yog, you will find the red stick in the yolk, country egg. So can, can we eat the, do you want, uh, should we eat the egg with the red stick? You cannot remove it. That stick is so fine. It's like a thread. Remove yolk from the white itself is difficult. Then from the yolk, you will not be able to remove that thread. You can eat it. It's okay. <clears throat> and probably that red stick is something which is giving us additional benefit as compared to normal. So you, today, every one of you have removed your myths of protein shakes and powders. Don't waste your money for that. Instead of that, you can buy dry fruits. That will help you reduce your cravings. It will give you more nutrients. You can invest that money for apple cider vinegar. Right? You can invest that money for buying more salads, even on those days when tomatoes are costly. Yeah? And have you noticed that when tomatoes are costly, they taste much better as salads. Yeah? So when we have tomato 40 rupees kg, we eat only one tomato as a salad. But when they become 80 rupees or 160 rupees kg, I eat two tomatoes as salad because the taste has enhanced. <laughs> yeah? So even if it is costly, you can buy. So don't waste your money for protein shake and powders. Any question? For today, my objective was to teach you for glucose spike, sudden glucose fall, how to prevent the cravings, how to stabilize this, have a balanced glucose spike and controlled fall. What are the foods to eat? Okay. Don't tell the client, don't eat sugar. Does not help. They are going to do that after two days or after one day. There are some clients, as soon as they go home, they have a craving because you told them not to eat and they have a rebellious nature as a teenager and they uh, want to fight back, eat more. And uh, so we also learned uh, the concept of fasting and what are the problems. <coughs> we learn uh, the protein substitutes. Okay. We learned that for um, having a balanced diet or for losing your weight, losing your fat, you don't need uh, 
you don't need fasting, strenuous thing. You don't need to change your complete lifestyle, complete overall. Yeah. You don't need to change your thali. Whatever is your thali, you maintain that. Add certain things, reduce certain things if required, if it is really harmful. Or modify the sequence. Gayatri, what's up me, that report? Kalani has asked an interesting question. Does lipids cause acidity? For someone who, who is having acidity after legumes, she will say yes. For others, they will say no. There is a problem. So there is a particular legume which does not suit you. So find out. Tuar dal, masur dal, urad dal, moong dal. Which one you like? Which one suits you? You understand? So if you are having acidity after every meal, after some legumes. So you change that legume and find out whether you are allergic to that. Personally, I don't eat Tuvardal because it gives me acidity. So it doesn't mean the legumes cause this problem. Tuvardal doesn't suit me. I will eat Moong, Pudad. <laughs> so Joelin has an interesting case. So there is a client who keeps on traveling and has to eat outside food and uh, she cannot follow the diet plan. The problem is not her. The problem is the diet plan. You have given a diet plan that is so demanding and exhaustive that will ask her to leave her job, sit at home and they do something, nothing with her life. Change overall. Don't change overall. What is in your thali? What is she eating every day when she is outside? What are the things she can add? What are the things she can modify? Order from Big Basket some vegetables. If you don't like outside salad. Yeah. If you like outside salad, you can add that also. Gayatri, you are not sending me the report, do you? Okay. My stamina is also gone. We will meet. I don't know how many days you will take. Say na. First report. Then say no need to type. What's up? Oh, you are typing. Get it. Next month. Oh. Okay. Enjoy the class. So whenever you attend the class, start your video and uh, keep smile on your face. Ask more questions. Ask more stupid questions. Ask easy questions, foolish questions. Because those are the questions everyone has. And they are afraid to ask. If you ask such questions, I will answer it very sincerely. And if you ask difficult questions, I will tell you to study more. Because you have a higher level question. <laughs> have a great time. See you again. Next Sunday. Join without reminders.